Hello everyone and welcome to uh, my very first uh, experience with Warhammer Age of Sigmar Spearhead. A few weeks ago I received an invitation from my Underworlds group to come over for a day of trying out the new rules that are included in Age of Sigmar Edition 4. I gladly accepted, but there was one minor detail. I didn't have an army assembled, let alone painted. Luckily, Vincent stepped up, assembled his INS Spearhead box and shoved them into my hand so I could get some good trashings coming my way. So with the camera and stuff packed, off we went to Philips for some Spearhead tryout gaming. We were four to the party and you can fit two games on the table, so that is already a bonus. The army present would be the Idenf Deepkin, the Maggotkin of Nurgle, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers and the Cities of Sigmar. So a bit of all different tastes. Peter and his Ossiarch faced off to the Maggotkin while I faced Vincent and his Cities of Sigmar. Now before we commence, I had some reservations about Spirit from what I've seen so far. This is that a small table would severely limit maneuvering in my idea, especially with the recycling of some units. Also, disclaimer, we will definitely have made mistakes in these games, as it was the first time trying it out. My, well, as said, Vincent's force consists of a Soul Scryer, whose shooting attack I forgot all day long, three Morsal Eel Riders, the Shark, still my favorite INF model, and two groups of the Marty Trolls. The first battle tactics were drawn, abilities picked, the healing of my cavalry and the bonus to cast Creeping Mist, and as both sides deployed, we were off to our first dabblings into the Spearhead game system. As the cities marched forward, deploying diagonally for more space of my eels to move, I braced for the first turn. Vincent's cannon quickly decimated a regiment of trolls in one blast before my mist and shrouded riders assaulted it, yet failed to take it down during only three wounds with their blasts and tons of attacks. Then a Marty and Shark assaulted the warriors as the other unit returned to the table. Here we made the mistake of having them come back anywhere, something that would hit harder on. The result in a 6-5 lead for the cities after round 1. I got a chance and took it for a double turn for round 2 as the warriors had been annihilated and then a Marty advanced towards the knights. They duly charged while the second unit and the shark engaged his general. The stalwart city's leader went down in a flurry of teeth and blades and the cannon was finally taken down as well. That took way too long for a bloody cannon. In Vincent's turn, the city's warriors returned next to my general, see the above play mistake, and quickly dispatched the soul scryer. Turn 2 ended as such with an 11-9 lead for the cities on the scoreboard. Fresh tactics were drawn for turn 3, where it was now the high tide, so I would always be striking first. The eels were engaged by the knights who had ridden themselves earlier of the trolls, but the second unit charged in in support together with the shark. Yet a lonely knight with one wound left remained after the whole attack phase in both turns, before finally in Vincent's uh, turn then uh, falling down. The city still led though, with 14 to 13, so it would all be to play for in the final turn. Vincent went first, solidifying his hold on the objective in the center. But now I must retract my statement of movement on the small boards as I drew objectives and managed to score all three by, well, movement. Spreading across the board with returning trolls and my high speed troops, I claimed all four other objectives and the cars for taking the objective top right, reclaiming objectives lost, etc. So I turned the game around in the final turn for an 18 19 victory. Not a bad debut. So the first game was already a close and fun affair, and with the play mistakes now sorted out, it was time to face the winner of the other table, Philip and the Maggotkin of Nurgle. And what a devilish army that is. 5 plus ward all over the board with 3 plus saves on his Blight Kings as basic, and a disease mechanic that can toss around mortal wounds. I opted again for the cavalry healing ability, but went for the general not getting save modifiers. And we'll duly forget that later on when it matters, but bear with me. We moved to Giran and again opted for diagonal deployment. Philip had a whole lot of stuff still in reserve for turn 3 so I needed to hit hard and fast before they arrived, aiming to assassinate his general to prevent healing and hopefully halving at least the Blight Knights. Blight Lords, whatever they're called. The Nurgle forces advanced down the center, my trolls coming to meet him as the eels swooped around his line with their impressive movement. They charged his general and took it out, but that would be, in hindsight, the last time it would roll even above one third of the hits, let alone that what came through wouldn't be saved or warded. So round one ended and Nurgle was behind 4-3. to three. In his second turn, the shark and the eels assaulted the Blight Kings, but all their attacks, the blast and stuff resulted in zero wounds on the unit. Ouch. The trolls engaged the plague bearers, but they didn't make it in either in those. This was not going well, and that was with two attacks each and a minus two rendu to anti-infantry ability. 
The other trolls returned to occupy an objective as my soul scry was engaged by one of the big flies and fell. Yep, remember that armor save I said at the beginning. The charge of the trolls didn't help either as they failed to wound the fly. Momentum swung to Nurgle and they now led 7 to 9 in the score. The shark fell to the disease mechanic and the, turn, the third turn would be all about hanging on and hopefully finally hit decent with my strike first, but alas. This resulted in my eels and trolls all being decimated, effectively tabling me totally. And although I had a 14-12 lead, again thanks to tactics, it looked grim. Or did it? I still had a call reinforcements card in hand and would bring back dice 3, aka 2 in the end, trolls. I had hoped for Philip to get first turn in order to bring them on and see what I could score without counter chance of him for playing cards, but that was not to be. Nevertheless, the daring duo managed to grab two more points so it all came down to the objectives Philip picked up. And it would become a nail biter. He could maybe score two of them and that would win him the game. But in order to do so he would need to kill both Namarty as his lone plague bearer wasn't enough to do so. He lined up three charges, being the fly needing a 10, the second plague bearer a 6 and the blight kings a 3. The fly failed the roll, so then came this very tense moment and it became very tense. Wat is important is that we film it. The 3. No. And in my key that ik ga in the movement. Oh. Oh, nee. Nee, toch niet. Ik zie altijd zo call reinforcements. Oh, maar dan besef ik dat eigenlijk niks dood is. Oké, de plague bears. Ja, maar je hebt nog niks van mij dood gemaakt. Maakt net iets omver. Dus, uh, ja. Je moet binnen een halve inch. Nee! Die nee! Nu. Nee. Twee andere dobbelsteren. Dat is een drie. Oh. oh. Dat is een negen zelfs. Oh. So, they made it and quickly dispatched the two warriors and Nurgle snatched a 16-18 victory in the end due to as such the twist and the tactic card sadly. Had I rolled even closer to 50% hits with the force hitting on trees and force it could have been a whole different story but now I must admit defeat my raiding force totally wiped out. So afterthoughts on Spearhead. It is definitely a fun game and it does indeed allow for either slow armies beating stuff up on block or swift armies playing the objective game. My feel is also that you need to score 4 to 5 points each round to stay in the race though. Botching a single turn in scoring will almost become an unsurmountable cliff though. Is it better than Warcry as the Age of Sigmar skirmish system of choice? No, as it might become predictable once you get to know the objectives and twists. Is it something easier to organize things for than Warcry? Definitely is though, and it does not intend the job nicely to become a step up stone for a regular Age of Sigmar. So now I'll be painting on my own medals, aiming to have a force ready by the end of the year still, as I like the system for what it is, a small scale, low time needed, casual little war game. Thanks for listening and until next time, bye bye.